What is Bitcoin? Have someone ever asked you what Bitcoin is and you did not know what to say? In this video, you get to know exactly what to say when next someone asks you what Bitcoin is and you know it's like you know your ABCs. I will tell you what Bitcoin is and explain how it came about with an interesting story filled with lots of information. In this story, it is a story of the evolution of money and it is the third video in our blockchain layer series. My name is Peter Mano and I promise to give you crypto education. So subscribe if you have not and hit the bell icon and let's get to this video. What is Bitcoin? In simple terms, Bitcoin can be defined as the first decentralized crypto currency. But to really understand what Bitcoin is, we have to look at the evolution of money. What is money? In simple terms, money is a tool we use to exchange value. Before money, men had trade by barter, which was not efficient because he has to continuously look for who has what he wants and wants what he has. And he cannot also preserve his wealth. So man looked for things he could use to exchange value. He tried salt, seashells and calories, silver, then gold. Gold held this position for a long time until the invention of paper money. I think the good thing about paper money is that you get to make it rain. The tools man used as money must possess some specific characteristics. This include, it should be rare, precious, generally acceptable, and fungible. Materials are said to be fungible when they are mutually interchangeable. So, if I lend you a $5 note, you don't have to pay me back that particular $5 note that I lent you. You could even give me five one dollar notes but if i lend you my car you cannot return a different car to me even if it is the same make year and model so my car is not fungible but the dollar notes is fungible same as gold and other tools used as money did you get that another thing you should know is that before the invention of paper money the people and not the government were in control of money but today, the government is. Initially, paper money was a certificate for gold held in treasury by the government. So I could take my paper money to the bank and exchange it for gold. Every paper money was representing gold in the bank. If the government wants to print more paper money, they have to have more gold in the bank. But this changed in the year 1971. You see, in the Second World War, the US didn't join the war until towards the end of the war. But they manufactured most of the weapon used in the war and received payments in gold. That's at the end of the war, about 75% of the monetary gold in the world was in the US. So the US had gold in the bank, backing the dollar while other smaller countries had dollar in their bank backing their currency. But it seems that the US has minted more paper money than they had gold in the bank. And these countries suspected it. So Belgium and Netherlands came to the US and cashed out their dollar for gold. Then Germany and France were about to do the same. The US, knowing that they could run out of gold if they keep allowing them to exchange their dollar for gold, took actions. In 1971, President Nixon declared that the US dollar could no longer be backed by gold, but by what the government say it is. This is what we call fiat money. So paper money transitioned from gold standard to fiat money. Now that this is so, the government could print as much money as they want without any gold justification and lots of governments abused this let's look at two of this zimbabwe 
Zimbabwe printed so much money that one trillion Zimbabwean dollars could not buy you a loaf of bread. In Venezuela, you will need 2.6 million bolivars to buy a roll of tissue paper. In 2008, the US experienced the housing crisis. According to PBS News, this financial crisis cost each American about $70,000. Now, this is when someone or a group of people decided to do something about it. The idea is this. Let us create digital money that is like gold. It is limited in supply. It can be mined. It cannot be counterfeited. It is under the complete control of the holder, but it should not be heavy to carry around like gold. So in January 2009, Satoshi Nakamoto created Bitcoin. So what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is the first decentralized cryptocurrency. It's a currency because we can use it to buy goods and services. It is crypto because it is encrypted, anonymous and cannot be counterfeited. Decentralized because it is open source, thus no one has sole control of it, not even the creator. First, because it is the first of its kind. It is also digital because it cannot be printed and it is limited in supply. Only 21 million Bitcoins can ever be mined. Bitcoin is possible because of the blockchain technology. But that is a video for another day. I believe that now, if someone asks you what Bitcoin is, you can easily say what it is. And this is where we come to the end of this video. You guys should know that I try to summarize a lot of things in this video, but I will leave a link in the description um, so you can check out some of these resources. For example, Bitcoin is not really the first of its kind, but the first successful one. A technology like Bitcoin uh, was created a few years before Bitcoin was launched, but the creators were known, so the government shut them down easily. Maybe that is a reason why the creators of Bitcoin um, decided to remain anonymous. In the next video on this series, I'm going to break down more things about Bitcoin explaining the technology so that we can move to the next layer on the project, which is Ethereum. Check out other videos in this series. I'll have them listed in the description box. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video and share, and I'll see you in the next video.